Hey guys, this is Ghost of Miner coming at you from the power of YouTube through the internet itself. Okay guys, so in today's video we're going to take a look at this hunk of junk. It was $49 from my local Goodwill, but can it run Fortnite? Stay tuned for the video guys so we can see how powerful this machine is. Let's take a look at my Dell Precision T3500. I actually got it from my local Goodwill for $49.99. This 40 pound behemoth from 2010 was a great workstation back in the days. It offered great balance of performance, scalability, and affordability. These units offered up to 24 gigabytes of DDR3 EEC memory, mine only came with 12. Back in 2010, these Dells started at $999 at the low end, and at the high end at $4,500. The great thing about this buy is that it came with a $489 option GPU. The NVIDIA Quadro FX 1800 had a whopping GPU clock speed of 550 MHz and a memory clock speed of 800 MHz. This card was great for its time, but not so great nowadays. It only has 768 MB of GDDR3 memory, but on the bright side it only has a TDP of 59 watts. This GPU is optimized for OpenGL 3.0. DirectX 10 through 11.1 support. As you see, I already added a PCIe expansion slot back there that gives me four more USB 3.0 slots. This computer comes with 11 2.0 slots, which is pretty crazy, especially nowadays that the transfer speeds are so slow. So right back here, looks like you can add two uh, 80 millimeter fans back here for extra airflow, which is not bad at all. Definitely will increase your performance of your PC if your PC is getting nice and hot. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back side of the panel. So you can see some rubber feet right there, so if you want to lay it on its side, you definitely can do that. Not bad at all. Or you can just stand it up depending on what floats your boat. So let's get and open up this case and see what's going on in the inside. One cool thing about these uh, workstation computers is they're so easy to work on. Right here you just pull back and the whole side panel comes straight off to reveal all the dust in the world. Oh my goodness guys, that's not the worst I've seen but that's still a lot of dust. Nice and dusty, look at all that dust, yum, let's get this thing cleaned up. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and hit that beautiful clean on button. And let's see what happens. So I'm using also a old school monitor right here. It's 1280 by 600 resolution. Beautiful SyncMaster 930B Dell Power Station Precision. Look at that. So let's go ahead and get started. I already preloaded some stuff on this hard drive. Look at that beautiful Windows 10 on a 10 year old computer. Beautiful old keyboard, beautiful old mouse. Gotta love this nostalgia here. Never had such a beautiful machine before though. That's the thing with these. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let me see if I can turn it up. There we go. Again, it's just a uh, solid a hard drive. So I didn't activate Windows, I just put some games on here. So let's go ahead and start off with Cinebench. And I should have put an SSD on here, but again, this to save some money. And pull the temperatures up. So, so far it's doing okay, um, 
let's see how long it takes. Again, this is a 10 year old Xeon, and it's not the highest end of its days. This is the Xeon W3520, which uh, back then I guess it was a pretty good workstation computer, but nowadays it's not that amazing. You can find these on eBay anywhere from about $15 to $20 US. Pretty much they're just giving them away. Um, you, you can you can probably make a pretty good network attached storage unit, a NAS. You can probably make a good little server, like a home media server. But beyond that, if you're doing any type of video editing or anything related to normal day, like workloads related to YouTube editing, video editing, it's going to take a long time. Will it be able to do it? Yes, it will be able to do it. Um, you can probably even put it on a nicer monitor. I actually had it connected to my asus uh, 2k monitor and it ran very well but putting it on a same year type of monitor this one is from actually 2008 but i have it connected to the um, dvi connection and it's doing pretty good the colors look pretty accurate uh, this was a pretty expensive monitor for its day the sync master 930b from samsung pretty color accurate my brother actually used this monitor when he was in art school in Houston, so that's why it was such a nice monitor for the days, because it had to be pretty color accurate back then as well. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let this do its thing. We'll come back to it in a little bit. Okay, there is the results. As you see right there, third from last, not the best results ever, but for the Xeon processor, we got 604 points on Cinebench. Again, my first run is all the way down here at 528. Really, the only difference I've done so far was blow it out, as you've seen in the video from the beginning. I blew it out with a leaf blower, and you saw all that crud and dust fly out of it. So maybe that increased my performance. Maybe not. Maybe on the second run, I just got lucky. So that's so far a very low score, but just keep in mind this is a 10-year-old workstation from 2009 but it can still render video. So that's not too bad for $49. Let's go ahead and take a look at CPU Z and run some benchmarks of that one. Again, really the hottest it got was about 80 degrees Celsius, which is not horrible for a CPU that does not have a fan on there. As you saw it, it's just a heat sink. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out or minimize it. Okay, so we went ahead and opened up CPU Z right here. Let's go ahead and see what we get on just the basic bench. Let's go ahead and start it, and we're comparing it to a i5 7600K, a seventh generation i5 chip. And the reason for that is because this one's four cores and four threads, just like our Xeon chip. Let's go ahead and see what happens, guys. Let's pull up the temperatures right here. So we're at a lovely, cool 85 degrees Celsius, zero load. Let's see what happens. Look at that spike all the way up to 100%. Temperatures are still pretty good. Okay, just like that, the benchmark is over. And as you see right here, the uh, seventh generation i5 is about two times the performance of the Xeon chip from 10 years ago. But overall, can it still perform pretty well? Yes. And does the fanless heat sink actually work? Yes, it does. As you see right there, on the Cinebench score, on the Cinebench test, it did not get over 81 degrees Celsius. Next, he has two 120 millimeter fans in the front, which probably keeps that CPU nice and cool. So let's go ahead and play some games that are actually games from 2008, 2009, and 2010. We'll go ahead and start off with Fable. Okay, let's go ahead and play some Fable. So this one does not have FPS reader from my, uh, MSI. So we're just going to go ahead and check and see how... Okay, so this is actually 1280 by 1024. So 
1280 by 1024. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure that's right then. The older monitors are interesting. There we go, 60 hertz monitor, or not bad. And let's see how it looks. Okay, so we just skipped that. And overall, guys, it, I mean, runs very well for such an old, I mean, <laughs> Looks pretty good for such an old game. This game is 10 years old, the same age as the computer, but overall I can see myself playing this for a couple hours. I mean, it does bring back the nostalgia era of uh, Xbox One games. It probably did not look as well as this computer is making it look. I mean, it looks pretty sharp. And especially on this old monitor too. This monitor is 10, 11 years old and the colors are actually pretty vivid. We are playing on a Quadro card. That probably cost around $500 when it was released. That's probably why it looks so good. The question is, let's go ahead and move it up a couple years and let's play some Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. That game came out in early 2010. Let's see if that can actually handle that game as well. So 25, 30, 41 frames a second. Pretty smooth for a quadro. Okay, let's go ahead and, how do I skip that? I guess I can't. Oh, it's a part of the game. Okay, let's go ahead and move around a little bit. I guess walk around a little bit. Still doing pretty good with frames. Space, walk faster. Can't even run it, it says walk faster. I don't. I never played this game before. I just got it because it was like $4 and I wanted to review a game from 2010. Let's see, running around 30 frames a second, not bad, oh, I can jump, okay, so playable, playable, now for the true, let's see if we can play some Fortnite guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and try Fortnite out. So far it plays games from 2008 and 2010. Let's see what happens here. So sadly, no guys, this computer was not able to play Fortnite. I really hoped it was. I kind of researched it a little too late, but the Quadro card I have is only compatible with uh, DirectX 11.1 and not DirectX 12. So we weren't able to play any Fortnite. But don't worry guys, the next video we'll go ahead and upgrade the GPU to something that can actually be capable of playing Fortnite. And again, this will be a sub $200 machine, so we're not going to go too crazy with the GPU. Anyways, guys, that will be in the next video. I'll see you soon. Please like, subscribe, and share. Ghost Bit Miner out.